Okay, uh, good afternoon. Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Sophia Lotevi, a third year PhD student in the University of Edinburgh. Uh, today, I'm here to talk about my um, uh, publication for Max Policy Sharing for Multi Agent Reinforcement Learnings for Autonomous Mobility on Demand. So, uh, at the beginning, let's start talking about the application, the mo autonomous mobility on demand. So the term is uh, autonomous mobility on demand system uh, refer to how to utilize the autonomous vehicles to serve uh, on-demand requests by passengers, which is uh, 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 just a, a practical copy of the classical problem called dial arrive problem that's uh, appeared at 1978, which is a subset of vehicle routing problem with pickup and delivery. Uh, another variation of this problem of this application is autonomous delivery on demand which is the same version of autonomous mobility on demand but in a seat of passengers we have orders to deliver from a point to point now the main challenge in this field is can be categorized in two different uh, scales for the long-term demand uh, distribution uh, we want to improve the service of autonomous mobility and demand based on some criteria in order to improve the pro uh, productivity of uh, the service. And this would happen by like responding to spatial and temporal demand of the service. And on the short term, we are trying to utilize the vehicle uh, assignment problem by maximizing the, uh, the fleet utilization for the short term uh, assignment for uh, vehicle to order assignment and also to, Im to, uh, to, to improve the uh, customer experience for waiting time and uh, reducing the uh, empty miles. So to capture this application, we had uh, uh, simulate uh, Edinburgh City uh, 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 autonomous mobility on demand for Edinburgh uh, City population. And the main metrics to evaluate uh, this application is uh, uh, to improve the occupancy rate of the fleet, also to, to improve the empty distance. The empty distance is the distances that uh, produced between before taking a customer and also between uh, uh, going back and forth to the charging stations. Uh, one metrics is very important in, in this field is the waiting time, which is uh, a major uh, uh, metrics uh, to be reduced for our customers. Also from a financial uh, point of view, uh, we are also uh, interested in uh, 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 utilizing the fleet size. Now today I'm, I'm here to talk about uh, how to use uh, re multi reinforcement learning to uh, for short term uh, utilization for autonomous mobility and demand and talking about uh, multi-agent reinforcement learning we have three main categories we have a centralized training centralized execution which uh, which means in this environment all agents just work as a single agent like big single agent that taking uh, observation from the environment and also updating the policy based on uh, uh, on the reward function we have also uh, the opposite of this one is the distributed training decentralized execution where each agent just work individually like just a multiple uh, single agents uh, each agent has uh, its own observation from the environment uh, develop their own a policy and also uh, maintain their behavior the drawback of the first approach is that the although the performance get more accurate but this kind of approach scale poorly because whenever the problem increases, the state space will increase correspondingly. And for the second type, uh, the issue here is that the environment will be non-stationary anymore because each agent will uh, uh, train themselves instead of other agents, while these other agents also make some dynamic change in the environment, which is non, uh, uh, which does make nonsense for the agent to learn in such environments. The last part, which is centralized training, decentralized execution, try to just mix the uh, uh, both uh, categories, where the environment generally is shared between agents, each agent works individually, but there should be uh, a shared information during their learning. Now, just talking about the literature, we have a famous algorithm called independent learner, 
uh, in this approach, just started at 1993, each agent work greedily in the environment, try to improve their uh, uh, policies, try to get reward as much as possible uh, with don't care about other agents. For the centralized training, decentralized execution, we have uh, fully observable critic learners. Uh, one famous example is the coma algorithm, where in this approach, there is like one uh, uh, critic and all agents just work as actors in the environment. And this critic uh, uh, will learn from the agent's behavior during their execution in the environment for the total joint action that is also be decomposed to agents uh, to learn during that time. There is another uh, variation of this technique called value function uh, factorization or value function decomposition. In this approach, uh, again, each agent works independently, but there is a central critic that evaluate each agent and compute the uh, joint action value and then decompose these action values into uh, uh, each agent. So today I'm here to talk about uh, how to use this approach for the application of autonomous mobility on demand. There are some uh, few research uh, talk about the same uh, problem. So we had the rebalancing issue. Uh, which is a famous issue in autonomous mobility on demand, where uh, each like robo taxi uh, have to serve uh, some demands, but also they have to take care of others' uh, taxi to do rebalancing and improve the quality of the service. Uh, at 1912, um, uh, Florian all, uh, and others uh, proposed cascade-based uh, reinforcement learning technique to solve this problem. There is also another issue, which is charging pricing uh, scheme for this, as it's built on uh, on electric vehicles, and it's need a charging, and increasing this charge could uh, uh, have a negative impact on the company. So, uh, uh, a work proposed to solve this problem using soft actor critic uh, deep reinforcement learning. Uh, also, for proactive request assignment and rejection decision, uh, one publication at twenty twenty. To, uh, to uh, discuss how to solve this problem using multi-agent deep de reinforcement learning, where there is a lot of uh, uh, like sudden information come to the environment, like uh, sudden rejection happen, and how the fleet should uh, come up with this change. There is also some work uh, discussed for uh, uh, autonomous mobility on demand up operations and ride pricing uh, using deep reinforcement learning. And also uh, at 2022, uh, uh, there, there was an application talked about constraints, multi-agent reinforcement learning to solve uncertainty for uh, electric vehicles. So uh, now I will move to the problem formulation of uh, autonomous mobility on demand uh, using uh, reinforcement learning terms mainly uh, Markov decision uh, definition. So uh, the part on the left is just a traditional uh, uh, formulation for reinforcement learning. We have a state and each state is defined by the uh, vehicle location, time, battery level, and bidding value. We have a set of actions like taking order, recharging, bidding, and also no operation. We have a set of agents uh, with uh, number n, and the reward function here is designed to just uh, uh, like appreciate agent for taking order and also uh, for doing a bid, where a bid is uh, just to communicate with other taxis uh, to either uh, take an order or lift. So these two actions will be appreciated by the system. Uh, the charging. Uh, sorry, the recharge get a negative reward. So, in order to try to 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 let the agent learn to take an order, but also to maintain their their recharge, so no greedy behavior anymore. So, uh, our definition here is to try to define this kind of learning, which is consensus learners, as follow. So, we will have uh, a set of policies for each agent during their learning uh, phase. And after a period of time, we will have uh, like a meeting where each agent vote what is the best action to take based on 
their their experience. Now we have n function means uh, m is just a number that uh, uh, just like a, a, a number showing how much this action is better for this state. And uh, after that, each agent should uh, update their own policy depends on uh, uh, these values. So uh, to evaluate our approach, we have uh, multiple single agents like independent learners, which is which we called it multi-agent, but these agents are fully independent. No agent take uh, care of uh, other agents. So for IQL, the red one is independent Q learner, and our approach is the shared IQL. So that means each agent works independently, learn independently. After a certain time, they start sharing their uh, conclusions. So uh, what we suggest here is to control this uh, sharing information based on epsilon. So for the enforcement learning guys, they know what is epsilon. Usually epsilon, epsilon is the learning rate. There is a kind of exploration and exploitation phases in, uh, during learning. So agents should start exploring like kids, just start exploring the environment, just knowing what is the best action and worst action, doing a lot of mistakes to learn more. And during the time, this learning rate should be reduced means that the agent should learn from their own experience, not all, uh, don't have any more uh, exploration. So now we just utilize this uh, rate. We use it also for sharing because we don't want the agents to share in their in very early stage. Although this is the one conclusion because we already started with starting by sharing and the result was horrible at that time. So we decided to control this using Epsilon. So we want the agents to start sharing when they have uh, more sense information to, to be shared. And the results show that the uh, sharing uh, scheme uh, outperformed the independent learners because they share their knowledge and they get more experience in very early stage. So uh, this figure just show how the independent multi-agent reinforcement learning uh, from, from multi-agent perspective uh, it, it does nothing. So we would, although we are trying to increase, increase the number of agents, but it does nothing for learning stage because each agent learned from their uh, own perspective and they cannot just utilize their other, uh, other agents' uh, experience. Now, talking deeply about the actions. So we have four kinds of actions. We have... Um, we have take order, recharge, fit, and no operation. That's all decomposed to create the uh, fitness function. So for taking order, it's uh, it's notable that the shared agents outperform the independent one, while both just have increasing uh, number of orders, uh, taking orders. Uh, the recharging uh, action, it's very interesting here to note that the recharging action starts uh, being low, then increased within the time because each agent learned from the beginning that they will gain very big reward when they take an order. But within the time, they make up uh, by taking a lot of orders, they consume their battery, which lead, uh, lead to, uh, to, to more recharging action. So the recharge action starts also be increased, which also penalized for the agent. So within the time, it's good to note also for the independent learners that the agents start being balanced. Uh, if we just mix these two pictures, the first and uh, second from the left, we will find that uh, the recharging uh, action being more stable means that the, the agents does not, uh, do not need to have more recharging action, but also they have more productivity, which is a sign that they have being more cooperative. The bidding action also increased, which is a part of taking orders. The no operation uh, uh, action start being uh, uh, low, then increase, then become low, which also a good indicator for how this fleet being more uh, productive in the environment. Now, we want to discuss these results on autonomous mobility on demand field. So uh, at the field, we, we talked at the beginning, take care of the waiting time, the number of completed orders, uh, the, the empty miles generated, 
So now we are talking about the uh, performance indicator for autonomous mobility on demand. We will see, uh, see that um, the independent uh, learner, uh, so, sorry, the shared uh, uh, independent learner outperformed the independent learners in terms of uh, completed orders. Also, the average empty miles, the empty miles by definition is the, the miles that's generated with no sense, like uh, just moving around the city without any customers. So these called uh, counted as empty miles, the miles going to the charging station and back from the charging station also is an uh, empty mile. So there is a, a significant reduce in the empty miles, and this is caused by the uh, negative reward here. So the agents start uh, being more productive uh, by being more cooperative. Because one of keys that make very significant empty uh, miles is that when there is an order and uh, independent agent decide to take this order, which is far away, then another independent agents also decide to take this order. And whenever the, the first one arrive, the uh, order is lost. So that's make a uh, huge empty miles for, for the fleet. Out of charge events. So, uh, uh, the out of charge events is reduced, and this is also an indicator for more cooperative behavior for both. Uh, sorry, for 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 both of them, caused by negative uh, reward. Yeah, this is all for uh, for this publication, and we are trying to commercialize this for autonomous delivery on demand. Uh, me and our team in the University of Edinburgh try to work on autonomous delivery on demand product for robots that's used for delivery services, uh, uh, for restaurant uh, delivery service. We succeeded to gain 40K pre seed fund. And for more information, if anyone uh, interested in this, you can follow this site. And as a conclusion, we talked today about the mix, uh, the max policy uh, sharing approach and how it's uh, outperform independent learners by definition. And uh, this uh, improved the autonomous mobility on demand uh, indicators in terms of completed orders, empty miles, uh, number of lost customers, and number of outcharge uh, events. Uh, we have still some questions about what could also improve this performance, because now we just only control it by epsilon value. We believe that we can also uh, improve the teamwork more uh, by having a, a more intensive experiment for this. Potential future research is to have more weighted voted uh, mechanism because now we are working on equal voting mechanism. All agents just share their experience and voting for the best action, but uh, we are looking for the weighted uh, voting mechanism and also uh, to manage the sharing uh, scheme based on their experience. This is all that I have today, and thank you very much for your attention, uh, and I'm happy to hear any questions.